Now, what is saving or screen analysis? So, saving is one of the mechanical methods used for either separation of particles or measurement of particles of different sizes. Now, the method is quite simple. There are standard screens. Those are arranged vertically and using some shaker, the stack is shaked. And as a result, particles either go through a certain screen or remain on that screen. The particles are smaller than that particular screen opening will go through it and particle larger than that particular screen opening will be will remain on the screen. It's simple, it's widely used and it's independent of other properties meaning it's independent of particle density, roughness or any other optical properties. It's depend only on the size of the particles. Regular sieves are made of oven wire screens. Now to make sure that when you describe the size of particle, everyone uses the same dimensions, everyone uses the same standard size, this screens has been standardized. And currently there are two sets of standard series. One is called this Tyler standard and another is the ASTM standard screens. If you mention the type of the screen and then mention its number, they get all the properties. So what is the opening and what is the wire diameter and so on. For both of these, the screens opening are square and the screens are identified as meshes per inch, meaning how many openings are there per inch. So the higher the mesh number, the smaller the opening. So the sieve analysis is used for particles between say 37 micron and over 5.6 millimeter these are oven this size range is for oven wired screens there are other electroformed micro mesh can be used to measure the smaller particles and the punch plates are used to measure larger particle than this range now let's discuss about one of these which is called this tyler standard series so it based on the 200 mesh screen so this 200 mesh screen is taken as the base and the other screens are obtained based on this size so 200 mesh screen means 200 openings per inch so 1 over 200 is given as 0 0.005 however there are wires so the actual opening is 0 0.0029 inch or 0 0.074 millimeter so diameter of the wires are different for the different screens and for this 200 mesh screen it's 0.0021 inch you can do the math here that you can see that this 0.0029 inch and 0.0021 inch that gives 0 0.005 which is 1 over 200 so if we add the opening plus the dimension of the wire you get this one about 200 there now what's how these other screens are then defined so the opening of any other screen is exactly twice that of the opening of the screen below it okay so the one above the 200 screen will have an area twice that of this 200 screen so if the area is needs to be twice, the opening size will be the square root of 2, which is 1.41. So the one above that 200 screen should be having an opening 1.41 times 0 0.0029 inch. So sometimes you need some intermediate screens. For this case, the area is not exactly twice, rather in between these two, giving one side of the opening equals 1.189 times 
the next smaller screen than the one below it. Now let's look at the table to better understand what we described. So look here for this 200 screen, it's opening 0 0.0029 inch or 0 0.074 millimeter. So this mark here shows that it's an intermediate screen. So if the intermediate screen was not there, the area of one particular opening for this one and this one should have a ratio of 2. So area ratio 2 means the opening ratio is square root of 2 which is 1.41. So if you can multiply 0 0.0029 with 1.41 that will give you 0 0.0041. The same thing with this 150 and 100. So between these two the ratio should be 1.41. So that's how you know that what are the openings of different screens in terms of the length of one side. So in that way you say that we have the 10 mesh meaning the 10 opening per inch giving an opening with one side 0 0.065 and the next one would be 8 mesh and if you multiply 0 0.065 by 1.41 you get 0 0.093. Now if you say something like I got a particle size between 20 mesh and 28 mesh. So when you are telling this the persons working at any other place will exactly understand what you are talking about. So that's what I said that these are standardized that everyone is using the same measurement. Now the procedure for screen analysis is simple. So based on the particle size, so you need to have some idea about what is the range of particle particles that are involved for this particular operation. So based on that you choose the screens. So not necessarily you use all the screens for every time. So if you don't have particle of smaller than some size, why would you use that? So based on the size ranges you choose the screens. And then you weigh and the empty screens. And then the arrange the screen in a stack with the largest opening at the top. And typically you have an you have a pan at the bottom. So you place the samples on the top screen and shake the stack. Typically it's done using a shaking equipment. And then after doing the shaking for around say 20 minutes or so, you remove the screen and weight the and measure the weight of the screen with the particles on it. So you calculate the mass of particles using the mass of the empty screens. So here in this figure it shows some screens here. So you see that. For this one we have the larger openings, this one we have smaller opening and there we have something in between. So depending on what is the range of the particle sizes you have, you need to stack it on a shaker, put all the particles on the top and you see here that depending on the openings, when you shake it, the particles will distribute themselves on different screens. And you can take the weight of the particles with the screens and using the weight of the empty screens, you can find out the mass of particles on each screen. Now when you get the mass of particles, you tabulate the mass of the mass, you tabulate the mass fraction and you need to present the result in some form. Now, how do you define the size then? You get the particles on a particular screen. What's this size? So for the particles on a particular screen, its size is characterized by two screens. One on which the particles are there and the other 
just above that screen. So for example, suppose you say that I have particle size 15 over 20 mesh. What it means that the particles went through 14 mesh and did not go through this 20 mesh. Then how do you define its size then? The size is defined as the mean of the openings of these two screens. So from here you find for this 14 mesh, the size is 0 0.046 inch. And for 20 mesh, it's 0 0.0328 inch. So what will be the size of the particles? It's simply this average of this two. So that's also mentioned here. The average particle diameter is taken as the mean of the opening of these two screens. And to present the result, typically are presented as a histogram with mass fractions of each increment ag against the particle size. And often you find an approximate continuous curve. Also, the cumulative diagram is also presented that plots the cumulative mass fraction, cumulative mass fraction is smaller than the particle of a given size. Now, when you get the particle size, those are used to calculate other properties, for example, surface area or number of particles or average particle diameter. So here is the example of a distribution of the particles. You see that the diameter which were obtained from the measurements. So you have the histogram and these particles mass fraction belonging to each fraction as are plotted. You see some sort of a distribution is obtained for this case, but the distribution may be very different for different feed material that you are talking about. Some feed can have wide variety of sizes. For some feed, the size distribution may be narrowed within particular range. And here is the cumulative size distribution. So you see that. So you say the Cumulative size distribution is used often to find out the cumulative distribution of particles, meaning that if you say what fraction of the particle is less than this 2 millimeter. So you go from here 2 millimeter and you say that around 90% of the particles are less than 2 millimeter in diameter. So often they are defined as what is the size of particles? So it is called this less than 50% of the particle is below the given size. So for this case, it's you see that the 50% of the particles are below the size of around 1.2 millimeter. So these are the uses, some uses of these graphs.